you're listening to the Academy podcast, the podcast for people who can but don't know how. This is where you get actionable steps to turn vague dreams into blissful realities. And I'm your host, Omoshala Victoria Wallaby. So let's get started. Hey, welcome to another episode. On today's episode, we have an amazing guest, Gader Vanderpool. Um, Gada is an award-winning digital marketer with over 20 years experience in the U.S. and New Zealand market. She has worked with both agency and various brands and now runs her own digital agency that delivers online coaching programs for coaches. She has led social strategy on campaigns for Playtex Baby, Ford USA, The Great Journeys of New Zealand, Echo Store, Air New Zealand, Fonterra, and MTV's Rob and Big. She now works with Tourism New Zealand on their social content as well as the digital strategy for a New Zealand recruitment agency. She is an educator at heart. She's always rolling out new initiatives to help women in business succeed, including the Confidence to Profit Virtual Summit that is happening in November, as well as the membership for business women that will provide the framework for women to launch and scale their online business. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight, Gada. So excited to have you here. Oh, thank you. I'm really honored and really um, excited to have this conversation with Victoria. So thank you for the offer to come on with you. So I've just read your amazing bio. I want you to tell me in your own words, who is the amazing <laughs> Gada Vanderpool? Who are you in your own words? Uh, okay. Well, so I'm originally from Canada. I'm of West Indian descent. So my parents are from Barbados, but they immigrated to Canada and that's where I was born. I now am the mother of three. So I have a two-year-old, a seven-year-old and a 12-year-old. And basically I traveled to New Zealand after university Fell in love with the place, fell in love with the Kiwi, and uh, we've done some traveling in between time, but New Zealand is my home. So I guess with every child, I've kind of, you kind of get pushed to feel like you want to do more and be more. And I guess it's leaving that legacy behind for them. So over the years, I've kind of been a freelancer, I've had my own business. And so then at the point right now where I am running my own business. Yeah, that's kind of a little bit about me. Yeah, you, you did say you had three kids. How do you juggle entrepreneurship? Because I, I understand it can be a wild, wild west. How do you juggle entrepreneurship with being a mom? Yeah, I guess it, it is. It's a big juggle. I think for me, what I've had to remember is I can't compare myself to anyone else. You know, I can't compare myself to someone who has no children, who is 20 years old, just at a university, and maybe doesn't have as many responsibilities, let's say. So I think that's what I just keep at the back of my head. For me, it is important to, it is, that balance is important. So, you know, I make sure that I have time, you know, I still go to play group with my youngest and that's time that I just turn off. You know, I have three hours twice a week where I'm at play group with him and I don't check my emails. I'm just playing with him. So a lot of it is about just being present. You know, I don't have normal nine to five hours because, you know, as I said, I had those two mornings where I know I'm with him. So it means on those days, sometimes I have to work later, but it's for me, it's all worth it. It's, you know, it's worth being able to to, to be involved in more of the kids' activities and uh, and that sort of thing. So it is a juggle. And sometimes sometimes the scale kind of tips a little bit, but I just have to bring it back. Yeah. Absolutely. I totally understand. That's, that's my life as well. Yeah. And that brings me to another question. I, I from your bio, I understand you are running a virtual summit next in november yes yeah that's right and it's called confidence of profit that's really interesting Mm -hmm. how did the idea for that summit come about what what inspired you to put together such a program so i guess i've had a bit of a a breakthrough year for myself in business Um, at the beginning of the year i had the opportunity to be a part of an eight-week mastermind and I think in that we kind of, I kind of step things up a level and, you know, something mindset has always been something that's been important to me. I think in the last sort of three to four years, I've really 
understood the importance of where your mindset can take you, where your beliefs mm-hmm. can take you, your beliefs in yourself. But then just doing this mastermind at the beginning of the year, I really had some really big shifts. And a lot of it was around mindset and that realization that a lot of what we do in business, even if we know, you know, the tools inside out, the right. social media tools, even if we know how to use Facebook and Instagram, it doesn't come together oh, if we don't have that confidence in ourselves, <laughs> you know, so and confidence. Yeah. And that confidence in our business idea. So then, so the idea of this, and I, you know, I, I work with women all the time that I see this. So the idea was, Yes, I want to help people with those skills. So the idea of this, and I, you know, I, I work with women all the time that I see this. So the idea was, yes, I want to help people with those skills on the social networks and stuff and sales skills. And, yeah. but I also want them to work through some of those blocks that they have around money or, you know, why, what are the things that are keeping them from succeeding? So I like the idea of, talking to all these right. people um you know i'm talking to some amazing women that are going to be speaking at this so yeah i just something just said in me i've got to do it i worked kind of backwards and figured out you know when i go oh, yeah i just something just said in me i've got to do it i worked kind of backwards and figured out you know when i wanted it to launch and worked backwards and went yeah, yeah this yeah. is it now's the time i'm going to do it <laughs> absolutely i resonate so much with that topic because for me I first had the idea for like an online business when I think it was in 2016. So I knew I had yeah. things that I could offer, but I just didn't have the confidence to stop. Like I hated recording videos. Mm. I just had all of these issues, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I had all of these yeah. issues, you know, and it was my mindset. It was not because the pro- product or the program I had was not good, but I delayed putting that together because mm-hmm. I just didn't have my mind in the right place. So I totally understand and resonate with this um, topic a lot. Yeah. And I think a lot of women out there yeah. will really benefit from something like this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I see women in business all the time where it, you, you kind of doubt yourself, you know, they, they talk about imposter syndrome where we're just kind of like, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah we don't um yeah we don't it. back ourselves <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we don't um yeah we don't back ourselves so yeah i'm really excited about it and you know the shocking thing i found as well even like big names like the names that we look up to still feel that way they just have to push themselves past that fear and and just do what they have to do Right. Yeah. And it's about, it's how you do that, right? It's like, how long do you, how long do you sort of wallow in, you know, a, a Facebook live video that didn't go well or whatever? Like, how do you deal with that? Do you just, you know, do you kind of wallow about it? Do you delete it and move on, you know? And, and I think that's what sets people apart, people that are kind of producing more or at a higher level, they can just, they can just deal with it and keep moving forward. Right. You, you've worked with this amazing, I'm just going to go back a little bit on, on the people you've worked with, the kind of clients you've worked with. How, mm-hmm. what made you decide to actually start running your own agency and your own, you know, online program mm-hmm. in general? Because you had some pretty amazing clients that you work with, which most of them are businesses. So this Confidence to Profit program looks like it will be serving more consumer style audience. So what made you decide to start putting together that offering yeah. for one-to-one women instead of, you know, just sticking with the business? Because it sounds like that should be more lucrative. Yeah, I guess it's when I look at what I really want to do. So I have run an agency before several years ago with my husband. And I think the back then we were probably ahead of the curve with what we were doing, the, the technologies we were using. And, right. but then also we, we had a very traditional structure, right? So we had a very traditional agency, people sitting in our office and just constantly, but then it turned into constantly having to find them work, you know? So the reason that we were doing the business, suddenly you're not doing what you're passionate about because I'm turning into this taskmaster and like turning into HR, having to deal with things and just constantly out there looking for work. And it wasn't, it wasn't really, none of, neither of us were doing what we were passionate about. But nowadays with, you know, with technology, with, you know, Zoom, with meeting rooms, 
with all the different project management systems, I can now have a team, right. like a virtual team. And so it, it feels, it feels more doable to have an agency, but I can kind of scale it the way I want to. I can just have a certain amount of clients, the type of clients I want. So I'm really into the, right. that tourism niche and lifestyle brands. But then also I'm really passionate about, like I'm just deep down, I'm an educator. Like I actually have a, a teaching degree. So I have a teaching degree from McGill. And that's something like I always get pulled back to coaching. Like no matter what I do, I always, it's something that I always, always, always have enjoyed. And so I'm constantly getting pulled back to that, to like coaching women. And yeah, and I think I, I pulled back to coaching, but then mm. I've realized that I really want to work with the women because I've been on the other end where you're, you know, you're buying courses or you're reading things and people talk about, you know, your, your business on autopilot mm-hmm. or growing your followers in 10 days and, and, and these promises that aren't sustainable. And so I just feel like I want to step in there and deal with women in a realistic way, helping them to build sustainable businesses, because I know what it's like, but that juggle, like it, it is really hard. The nine to five with a family is really difficult. And, and that's the big thing that makes me want to run my own business, you know? And I'm sure you get that. <laughs> I'm sure you understand that too. I totally get it. I totally understand that. And I'm just going to take you back for a moment. This is just because you mentioned something so important about how people buy courses online based on purely marketing tactics and only to mm. find out that those obviously you paid for it you're in it already but it doesn't fit your life and at the beginning of the call you did mention that one of the things that helps you is just to not compare yourself with other people but that's really difficult with the kind of aggressive marketing that we see these days um you are you know kind of made to buy the course and you so for example i'll use myself as an example i do have a story around this so i bought this course at the time it was sold by this single lady who had no kids was not married you know so she had all the time (laughs) on her hands to you know go at it fully and it was sold as you will in you know six weeks do this and at the end of six weeks i was not even halfway there i felt so bad about it i felt like a failure i felt like you know I had not done everything I was supposed to be doing, but that was when you said that you stuck with me. I had to take a step back and say, look here, this person who's saying this does not have your life, does not have your responsibility. She has more time on her hands to get all of these things done. So yeah, so that's why, um, if you can just expand on that a little bit, just so that people know, it's not just about this shiny object syndrome that you see because of the way people market stuff. You do need to actually look at your life before you make that decision. So yeah, I, I just wanted to expand a bit more on how you're able to actually call it out for what it was and take a step back and say, yeah. no, my life is different and I will honor my, my life and my, my time, my way. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Because I think as well, we we um, there is a bit of shaming that goes on where people say, well, you know, we all have the same hours in a day and, you know, you, we all have to prioritize. It doesn't matter if you're a mom and versus a single person. And, and, and it does. It absolutely does matter. Um, and and I, I don't, yeah, I don't think people should shame people for, you know, we, we use words like the hustle and the grind. And yes, there is, there is a season for the hustle and the grind and stuff, but we also have to honor what feels right within our family, what feels right with where we are in life. So yeah, definitely there is a bit of, if you get that feeling that whatever program you're looking at or, you know, whoever you're looking at, whether you kind of feel uneasy about that push, that the way that they're pushing you to believe that, well, you obviously just don't want it enough. Mm, that's, yeah, that's not great. <laughs> that's not great. I mean, and, and I've been through programs where, you know, as you said, where they say at the end of eight weeks, this is what you'll have. And I haven't reached that. But then I also have thought that, you know, I, I am getting something out of it. It is working. It's just going to take me longer. And I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally fine with going through something where It takes you longer, but as long as I am getting something out of it and it's not, it wasn't just a, you know, an empty promise, then that's okay. Because again, it's, it's, everyone's different. Totally. I totally agree. And for me, when, when it happened, it kind of made me discouraged with the whole program in general. And like you say, 
there is value in a program. It's just that because I didn't get the result at the time frame was specified, I kind of lost hope. But then when I became realistic about things, um, I started to see the value in it. And like you said, I just decided it was going to take me longer. But yeah, it was, it was doable. So I really love that you brought that up um, so that people out there know not to compare themselves to other people because we all have different you know, pathways to whatever we're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to ask you another question. Now, as an entrepreneur, I don't know. I know it's it can be very challenging. And have you ever felt that temptation to kind of ditch the whole thing and say, look, throw in the towel, I'm done. It's not working. You know, have you ever had any of those kind of challenges and how did you overcome them? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I've definitely had those feelings, but I've never truthfully thought that I would stop, you know, that I would stop being an entrepreneur. I just, I, for me, the the other side is just not as exciting. You know, the I don't feel like I've come to a place where I feel that I am made to help more people, that I'm made to help more people kind of achieve more. You know, I, I feel like I'm meant to help people, you know, just people who want to achieve more. You know, there's there are people who want to do nine to five jobs. There are people who are extremely good at their nine to five jobs. There are people who are extremely happy in their nine to five jobs. Um, and that's not the people I'm talking to. I'm talking to people who just, they've got a message, they have a skill and they just don't know how to get it out there. And, you know, that really fires me up the idea of helping people do that. The smallest thing, helping people set up a Facebook profile, helping people see the importance of video, like it just that keeps me going. That's more motivating than, I guess, unfortunately, you know, I've worked with agency a lot and I, I think that could be, that could be tough, you know, that can be, that, that life can be tough. So yeah, I, I prefer <laughs> my side of things. So yeah. And I, I think as well, I, I mentioned before, like I've come up with a lot of different practices over the years for staying grounded, like a lot of mindset work, gratitude, journaling, meditating has been one in the past year that I've been doing fairly regularly. And I think you just, yeah, you just kind of know what you're meant to be doing. You, you get clarity. You see how, I don't like to say lucky because, you know, you produce your own luck. You know, I was saying to my husband the other day, we're not, you know, we're not lucky to have our children. We, we, they're a product of our parenting. They're a product of how we've decided to parent them. So nothing is luck. It's, you know, what we've, what we've done to get where we are. So I just, I think a lot of those practices that I'm doing, being more mindful and journaling and all that has just uh, made me realize that, no, this is the path I want to be on. And um, things take as long as they take, right? You can either <laughs> be doing something you hate and it's the same amount of time mm-hmm. is going to pass or you can be doing something you love. I just yeah. want to tap into your expertise um, as a, you know, digital marketing um, entrepreneur. What advice do you have for somebody? So I'm just going to use an attack here. So someone who works a nine to five job knows, no knows, knows that they totally do not fit in there and should be doing something else. But just to know how to get started on, you know, social media, branding, how did you even get out there as a buddy online? How do you, yeah, where, where do you start? Well, I guess it depends. I mean, if you're talking about someone who doesn't, doesn't even really know what, who they want to talk to or who, or, or what they want to do, I think you probably just want to focus in on one network that you like and really start to get your head around that and look at how you can be more visible. The other suggestion is, you know, if you do know where you're kind of going and, and um, who you want to talk to, what kind of coaching you want to do, you know, look at what other people are doing. Um, there's, you know, obviously no harm in that. I'm not saying to copy someone, but look at what they're doing. Look at, you know, what kind of tools they're using, because at the end of the day, social media, it is just a tool, but uh, your message is always going to be what sets you apart. So you kind of have to, you kind of just have to get out there and look at the different networks, see what's working. And um, yeah, just, just, dive in and 
try and do the same things. Try and do it regularly. If it's video, just start with five minutes, just, uh, you know, five minute video on something else that you're passionate about, about a different hobby. Because at the end of the day, that's still going to just get people getting to know you. So it doesn't have to be about digital marketing, just uh, about anything. Um, but then I would also say in that digital marketing space, you need connections. So you probably want to look at, you know, there's free groups on Facebook that you can join and you can start to learn and you can start to make connections with people. I mean, that's that's how we met, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, in a group. You're so right. That's true. Um, yeah. 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 So I just meant to also just ask you, when you decided to actually go out there and help people, because, yeah, you 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 have good intentions, right? Have you had a situation whereby you just felt like you were, you know, throwing the message that wasn't like, you know, getting well received, You're, you were not able to communicate your intention properly. And how did you overcome that if you experienced it? So do you mean as in someone that I've worked with where the, I didn't feel like they were? No, no. So, so for example, when you, when you decided to, you know, move from service business to one-on-one clients, which I think going online. So this is just not people you know. How did you? Be able to talk to people that you did not know and have them see your expertise. You know, have have your message resonate with them. Um, well, I think it, it's sometimes it feels like I'm not sure if you know I'm not always sure if my message is being received, but I know I have something to say, and I just I continue. You know, I, I continue down the same path. I know, I know. Um, you know, how I want to run a group or, or, or whatever it is. And, um, you know, people then will say to me, you know, I, I'll run into people that will say to me like, gosh, you do that so well. Like the way that you're always, you know, posting on Facebook and you post valuable information. And, and I think that's the danger with social media. You don't always know because people are watching you, but they're not always interacting. Um, sure. And then, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. True. <laughs> and it can be frustrating at times because you need that feedback yeah. to know, you know, if, you know, am I doing it right? You're not getting what I'm trying to say. Yes. And people are just not engaging with you. No, not not always. But um, I, I guess it goes back to the big thing with social media has always been consistency. That always will remain to be consistency. Whatever you're doing. You know, if you are going to do live video once a week, you've got to keep up that consistency. People come to expect it, whatever it is you're doing. And, uh, you know, more and more, like it's just been announced, Facebook is also testing, taking away the number of likes, you know. So they rolled that out on Instagram where you can't see how many likes people are giving a post. And now they're starting to test that in Australia on Facebook. So, you know, again, it's it's that whole thing of they're kind of pushing people to just push out valuable content and kind of not worry about the likes. And it's it is a yeah, it's a big shift for people. But um, at the end of the day, if you are consistent, if and you're the people that you're trying to reach will find you. You know, if you're consistent, if you are keeping up with you know where you need to be, if you're actually in the right places and you're on the right networks, you're in the right groups, um, you are adding value, then, you know, your your community will find you. Mm, wow, that's lovely. So, And um, if listeners want to engage with you, learn more from you, or even sign up to the Confidence to Profit Summit, how, how do they do that? Where do they find you? Yeah, so oh, I'm <laughs> a lot of different places, but um, so confidence to profit dot com is uh, where the virtual summit website. So that is not up just yet, but we have finalized most of the speakers. There's going to be about twenty plus female entrepreneurs. Um, so going to be pretty exciting. But gada vanderpool dot com is also my website. So that's G H A D A Vanderpool. And you can pretty much search for me on anything with uh, Gata Vanderpool. And there's not too many other people with that name. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a very unique name. I will also put links to your um, digital platforms in the show notes as well. Mm-hmm. 
so there you have it thank you so much for listening and for more content like this follow us on our social media handles on facebook it's at icandemy the facebook page on instagram it's at icandemy or come say hello over on my personal page on instagram it's at omoshala speaks on facebook it's victoria wallaby feel free to reach out introduce yourself say hello i love meeting you and if you have any stories that you feel will inspire another woman to action i want to hear from you i really do i love hearing from you send me an email to hello at icandemy.org so it's hello at icandemy.org 